Welcome to Hexagon Live. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest, and we're here at the Hexagon Live show in hot Las Vegas, Nevada at the MGM Grand. And with me today are uh, Norbert Hanka, President of Hexagon Metrology Thanks. Worldwide, and also Al Peasland, uh, Head of Technical Partnerships for the Infinity Red Bull Racing Team. And um, Al, let's just start off with you. I mean, there's a lot going on right now with some, uh, some rule changes with, uh, with Formula One racing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been in the sport 10 years now. This is our 10th season, and we would suggest that this is probably the biggest overhaul of rules that we've seen in, in that 10 years. So that considerable uh, changes to the regulations, both for car design, the way the races are run, and actually, we have uh, quite a short movie here that uh, probably does a better job of explaining it than I could. Okay, sure, let's take a look at that. Hey, I'm Daniel Ricardo. The guys at Infinity Red Bull Racing have entrusted me with all these beautiful, bespoke little works of art. I hope I don't do too much damage here. Oh. Feels good. Can't wait to see what this new car's capable of. Things have changed a lot since 2013. The technical regulations are very different for this season. Let's compare the new and the old car. I've got the new one. Sebastian's driving his winning car from last year. The philosophy behind the new rule changes was to make the car safer and more fuel efficient. Here are the main changes. New nose, front wing, rear wing, engine, gearbox, an enhanced energy recovery system and much more. The amount of fuel used in the race has been restricted. We now have 30% less in the tank. How can you save that much and still keep running? First of all, we get one extra gear, eight instead of seven. The most revolutionary change is the new fuel efficient engine. Much higher pressure fuel injection for more complete and efficient fuel burning, two cylinders less, V6 instead of V8, there's a ref limit of 15,000 RPM, but the turbo is back. And with the turbo, the turbo sound. The energy recovery system has been enhanced. The new ERS now has two motor generator units. The new one is powered by the flow of hot exhaust gases. The other one still uses brake energy from the rear wheels. It's a lot more powerful now. The battery pack now stores 10 times the amount of energy. That's enough for 33 seconds per lap rather than 6.6 .6 as before. And a double boost of 160 horsepower. Therefore, more torque, which means it's tougher to control getting on the power. So we can expect lots more battles. The outside and the aerodynamics have also changed quite a lot. Our feet move down because the nose comes down for safety reasons. The front wing is narrower, downforce is reduced significantly, the blown diffuser is gone, as well as the beam wing, the rear has to be supported. The main flap is flatter and opens up further. DRS attacks can now be more aggressive. The new power units have to last longer too. We used to have eight engines for the entire season, now we only have five complete power units. Shall we give the first engine a tickle? Heck yeah. So Al, uh, that's a lot of changes uh, yeah. coming up for, uh, for, for the rules, and this has a big impact on, on setup for a race, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ev every race we go to, the car's tailored for the circuit, so uh, as well as adding general performance improvements to the car, we're also tailoring the car for that track. But actually, with the, the big rule changes this year, the car itself has been a, a complete redesign, literally from a clean sheet of paper. And, so, and, and let me inter interrupt just a mm. second. I mean, I, I, uh, regarding setup, I mean, believe you told me that you guys do 19 races, yep. 19 countries yep. in nine months. Yes. So basically, a race every every two weeks to, d during race season, right? Yeah, absolutely. On average, every every two weeks. And so the, these setups that we've been talking about, those have to be done before each of those races, and you've got a relatively little time to do it. Yeah, very little. And, and actually, some races are back to back. So uh, we would take the car directly from one circuit onto the next. 
So any new parts that need to be sent to the track, it's the first time they get, you know, get to see the car is at the circuit. The mechanics and the engineers then have to assemble those components to the car in the garage at the track. So it's, um, yeah, being able to, to push design change through the business quickly and hit those deadlines that, unfortunately for us, the race date never changes. And so we absolutely have to hit that deadline, which gives us a huge time uh, pressure um, and more, no more important than in the inspection department where we have to inspect very quickly. Right, let, let, let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, the, the reason kind of we're, we're, we're having this discussion right here is to talk about strategic partnerships and really sure. what they mean. So here we have, we have Red Bull and you have kind of the way that you do things. You have a metrology company, a, a, a very large metrology company. Yes. What is the value for you in terms of the whole setup and everything that you need to do to keep your business running? What's the value of that of working with somebody like uh, Hexagon? It, it's in many areas really. Firstly, you know, it, we want to partner the best in the business. We want the best technology. That that's the only way we can be competitive. Then we need uh, partners that understand our challenges. They understand that it's, it's not just about precision, it's also about performance. And so whilst we have two drivers in the business, which is performance and reliability, that carries across to every area. So in our partnership with Hexagon Metrology, it is about can they provide high quality components, high quality tools and service, as well as high performing tools and service. Right, now, now Norbert, for, for you guys, for Hexagon, it's a little bit, different. I mean, you've got a very large organization, uh, kind of a traditional, maybe software, <laughs> hardware type organization. You're working with a racing team. So what's the difference for you, or what's the value maybe in that partnership for, for Hexagon to team with something like this? Yeah. Uh, he talked about performance and reliability. Performance as well. We have to measure our business every time as they do this. They are very process oriented in the sense, and this is really what we want to do as well from our point of view, to look at that and measure everything, every process was possible. Our machines, how we perform, how we can do things even better. We heard about the uh, user experience, how we can do processes better from our point of view. That goes into that direction from our. Plus, what is important for us, we have uh, constant feedback loops as well. We are looking for as well to see uh, how, how are things happening, how we compare, say, real data to virtual data as well. So there's a lot of things where we can learn from it. So uh, you, you mentioned the, the whole mm -hmm. feedback thing, so uh, uh, I, I, I don't think you've touched on this yet, but yeah. there is a lot of feedback in terms of keeping you guys uh, rolling very quickly, and so Hexagon is learning from, from, from that kind of feedback that, that this kind of team uses, is it's, that what you're exactly, saying? Exactly, but not, not from a technical point of view, more sure. from a mindset point of view, from kind a of cultural point of, culture point of view. Okay. From point of view. Um, Al, um, at your presentation yesterday, you mentioned, uh, mm. you used the term, uh, uh, I believe you said microns equals milliseconds. milliseconds. Right, that was pretty interesting. Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we talk about microns in the, in the metrology world, and, and for us, the, the quality of parts that we send to the track are crucial. The designers are always pushing the boundaries. They always want far, you know, far more precision. Um, and really, it's, it's one thing that we have to eliminate from any variables when we're taking a car that is this new, has this much new technology. We have to be re completely confident that the parts we're sending to the circuit are, are totally reliable and of the best quality. That in, in itself then helps us have a more per high performance car, more competitive vehicle, which ultimately then helps us to be successful on track and, and literally, you know, hundreds of a second, milliseconds can be the difference between, you know, finishing first or second in a race. And I think uh, reliability plays a part in this uh, as well, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, accuracy, speed of, of measurement, yeah. that type of thing, uh, yeah. reliability. Um. Yeah, absolutely, because we're, we're, you know, we're very cost conscious. We have very uh, tight cost constraints. And so any piece of equipment we have, metrology equipment included, we need to make sure that it's working 24 seven. We need to, we, we can't afford to have spare resource. So as well as the car being reliable on track to win races, we also need every area of the business to be reliable. We, need, we have to be fully dependent on it. So I, I, I see Norbert shaking his head over here. <laughs> um, so 24-7, so I mean, these guys are used to working around the clock. Yeah. They're, 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 their guys are running continuously. Their equipment's running continuously. Mm. How does that work out for you guys? Yeah, normally it is not that the equipment in, <laughs> in our world runs 24-7, but they are extreme tester, giving us feedback as well very quickly and demanding feedback, by the way, as well. So, but this, this is good because that keeps us honest to ourselves because I think our products are extremely reliable, 
can we do better? For sure. And they are doing this every time. You, you saw the pit stop and uh, we had an earlier discussion, as you know, two years before they half did the time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what, what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in case you don't know what we're talking about, there was a video that, uh, that uh, Al showed of the uh, Infinity Red Bull racing team that set a world record for, uh, for a pit stop, yeah. 1.93 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny, I mean, you see yeah. the car pull up and about yeah. the time you're going, oh, they're getting ready to start a pit stop, it's done. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're uh, tearing and, out of there. Yeah, and as I said, that's, that's yeah. a great example of not only innovation, design innovation, but also teamwork and human performance and then and an attitude of constantly wanting to be better, you know, that continuous improvement. And that's, I think that's an attitude we exactly. share. Exactly. And that's, that's what we are looking as well, as, as you know. For being in quality, you, you, you have to provide the quality, but we need to do the continuous improvement. And I think they are great in that. And, and what, are you, what are you learning? I mean, this, this partnership is, is how old? Um, oh, well, long, yeah, long years. At least four, years. Okay. five but years, so but we were customers before partners. Partners, so okay, exactly. Yeah, we've so been what, 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 is, what are you learning about, uh, about culture, about yeah. a, a culture that is, that is helping you? Okay, a couple of things. What they have is, in the sense, they have the right mindset. Uh, one focus, one objective to produce the fastest car, uh, that's for sure. An organization should have the same. We just have to make sure that it is like that. They have one factory, we have a couple of more of them, so it's a little bit more, say, decentralized and a little bit more of a problem to do that. So <clears throat> we are now at the moment discussing how they can help us to get the right mindset in all, say, our locations from my point of view. What, what is a mindset? I mean, if you, were yeah. to, if you were to summarize, what is a mindset for Infinity Red Bull? Well, we, we, are, we do have the luxury. We're in a sport that is quite binary, so it's very easy to focus Meaning our team. Meaning you, you win or you lose. You win or exactly. you lose, yeah. And, you know, we have a team of 600 people, yeah. and to get them to work in the one direction, we have a simple mission statement, which is to win races. So every, every individual in our team that comes to work in the morning they're there to, uh, with, that, with that factory in mind, to, to help the team win a race. And it's an easy way, it's a great way of fostering a mindset. But, but then, you know, we, we have the, the Red Bull, our, our owners, Red Bull have a, a, a kind of a brand, a culture that we follow, which is to live life to the max, to have fun, um, to not take ourselves too seriously. And we've been able to balance that with the professional, the, uh, the, the engineering approach that's needed to be successful in the motorsport. And we've managed to get a good balance. And I think that's something that we're, we're able to work with our partners and, and you know, just to say that this is how we approach things, guys. And if this can help, then mm. that's, that's a great, a great okay. thing. So very, what, what I like with them, they are very approachable, very professional. And that I think their values, what I th believe hexometrology stands for as well. Uh, yeah. Technology wise, be absolutely pro professional, be on the top of everything, but still approachable. Plus, we have a very multicultural say, organization and theme for my point of view. So I think that's what we can have in common. Okay, well, let's, let's finish this up with uh, yeah. kind of some forward looking. I mean, yeah. uh, in terms of innovation, um, talk to us about yeah. innovation. Uh, where, where are you guys going? Uh, you know, we've, we've had a great partnership. We, from our side, we're really keen to, to see that grow. Um, for this year, we've started to take more metrology equipment to the races and we're finding great value in that. That's something we want to pursue further. Obviously, the car's being assembled at the track, so to ensure and to, to, you know, to, to be certain that the car's built to the best quality at the circuit, um, we need the right equipment to do that, and, and, and hopefully that's helping you know, Hexagon then come up with new technology, more portable technology that we can we can test as soon as we can get our hands on it. That's. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you don't want to give away any secrets, but I mean. No, not really. <laughs> not really. But I mean, in, in, has this partnership uh, led you guys to to rethink maybe some some th st stuff you're going to do going forward, maybe some some innovation that sort of yeah. thing. Uh, we have uh, on a regular basis now meetings um, where we say tell what are our roadmap and we discuss this as well, setting some priorities in the sense and seeing okay what's the additional demand from, from our point of view and that's that's working very nicely um, and, and I think that is what we will see in the future more and more coming. We are now looking into software as well because we believe as well in software as you have heard in the keynotes as well. So we have to see how we can help them that the feedback loop means from say the production which is then at the racetrack down to the headquarter, how that works. I come back to what I said earlier, the constant say comparison between reality and virtual reality in a sense. So I think that's, that will help us a lot. Okay, well, gentlemen, thank you for, for joining us here on the show today. Uh, Norbert Henke, uh, president of Hexagon Metrology Worldwide, and Al Peasland, uh, head of technical partnerships okay. for Infinity 
Red Bull race team. Guys, thank thanks you. for joining us, and thank you for joining us also for Hexagon Live. So long.